So I wanted to know more about Remark. What did it do? Who created it? Should I invest in its token? And naturally I went to YouTube to find a good resource to tell me all these things. But I was really disappointed. All I could find were really simple YouTube videos that basically read the website of Remark to me and then made a random price prediction on what they thought the coin would be. Or two, really hyper sophisticated technical words like eternally liquid, forward compatible, nested, conditional, multi-resourced NFT technology. And then they made no attempt to try and translate what this means to me. So. In this video, I'm gonna make the resource that I wish I found. What is Remark? What the hell does it do? Is it a good coin for you to invest in? And why could this technology be massive in the future? And I mean like really massive. I'll also give you my personal thoughts on its price prediction and the NFT tokens in its ecosystem, including one NFT project that they haven't launched yet. And I promise to explain it to you in the simplest English possible, because Remark really is the token that you're gonna to wanna to understand. If you want the really short Cliff Notes version of this, they have the ability to make NFTs way more than just a static JPEG. They make them dynamic. And the effects of this can only be underestimated right now. So all I ask you in return is you hit that like button down low for me, down low on that like button, not the top of the like button, and hit that subscribe if you wanna see more coin breakdowns like this. Okay, so I actually wanted to start with the same complex jargon that's listed on the Remark website that all these technical videos use. Remark gives you the ability to create eternally liquid, forward compatible, nested, conditional, and multi-resourced NFTs, or what they call NFTs 2.0. Now, I know this probably means absolutely nothing to you, but my goal is by the end of this video, we're gonna revisit this sentence and you're gonna know exactly what it means and why it's gonna be so powerful. To start to understand Remark, we have to zoom out just a little bit. That is, zoom out to the blockchain that is actually built on top of the Kasama network which essentially acts as a layer zero blockchain. What does that actually mean? Well, Kasama is a relay chain that connects other layer one blockchains together so that they can share their features between one another. This means that Remark NFTs will eventually be compatible with every single blockchain. But in order to do this, the Kasama blockchain must be really light, meaning Kasama can't store a lot of data on its blockchain like Ethereum can because that makes it heavy and hard to move around. And one of the heaviest parts of a blockchain is a smart contract because this makes it open source and allows everybody to deploy whatever they want to the blockchain. So this gives us the restriction of not being able to put any smart contracts on the Kasama blockchain. And now because you can't put smart contracts on the Kasama blockchain, you can't write logic onto it. And just by definition, NFTs are smart contracts and logic. So why the hell would Remark choose Kasama in order to put their NFTs on when it's basically the worst chain for it? Well, these restrictions are actually a superpower. Remark uses the colored coin technology to developed in 2013 as a way of writing custom messages onto its blockchain. The method is basically adding really light packages of data into the blockchain instead of big heavy smart contract. But it's how you interpret this data where you can actually emulate what a smart contract does on the Ethereum blockchain. So putting this really simply, you can imagine Ethereum is a big heavy blockchain that stores a lot of data on top of it and its smart contracts are full instruction manuals and contracts that are actually stored on the chain. Whereas colored coins or Remark strategy uses really simple and light symbols embedded into the blockchain that correspond to rules in a universal instruction manual that's kept off chain, which essentially leads to the same outcome, but a much lighter blockchain. And to clarify what Remark is, because it's not the actual blockchain, but Remark is the set of rules and specifications on how to interpret these special messages on the blockchain. And these special messages are actually called Remarks, which leads to the actual name of this program protocol, Remark. It's not pronounced RMRK. Now this is all very fun, but why the hell would we want to use this sort of technology over the Ethereum smart contract NFTs? Well, this technology actually allows you to be way more creative than you could be with a smart contract. Remark NFTs are actually the most advanced NFT technology out there, and you can have some really awesome innovations, which we'll get to in a minute, if you use this technology. In fact, if you see these big influencers on Twitter talking about what they want to see coming to NFT technology, Remark's basically already doing it. And this is because of five mind-blowing features that Remark enable using this colored coin method. And I'm gonna go through these five features with you so you can understand exactly what the power of this Remark NFTs are. Because remember, if we compare them to a normal NFT, it's basically just a static image. Now let's have a look what you can do on an NFT collection with Remark. The first feature is nested NFTs. The ability for any NFT to contain another NFT inside of it, like a babushka doll. And the NFT that's inside of it is actually owned by the NFT that's around it. 
At its core, the principle is really simple. No longer does the owner of an NFT have to be a smart contract address or a human address, but it can actually be an NFT itself. And the amazing thing about this technology is you can have an infinite amount of NFTs nested inside of one another. Now, this just seems like a quirk, but what is the real world application or why is this interesting at all? Well, there's actually a lot of uses for this technology. Think about crypto gaming. When your in-game characters running throughout the world and they come across a sword, you can now equip the sword directly to the character, which is also an NFT and not to your overall wallet. Or if you own a profile photo NFT, you can actually equip other NFTs inside of it, such as a hat, or a staff that they're holding, and that will be displayed as your profile photo as you're updating this NFT in real time. This not only can add to the value of the NFT because when you sell the parent NFT, the children of that actually go inside of it. So you're not selling bundles of NFTs that you can play together, it's actually still just one item. And because the NFTs inside the big NFT can actually have valuable use cases. One example that they use is imagine that you can have a DeFi staking bracelet on your character's risk that gives you a higher yield. Now your character becomes more valuable because they actually own that bracelet. Now, if we go back to that super complex sentence at the start, we can see we understand one component of it. This is the nested segment of it. Ah, we're getting there. The second feature are multi-resourced NFTs, which is the ability for the NFT to vary its output depending on what context it's opened in. Now, once again, what is the usefulness of this or why is it even interesting? Well, imagine if Amazon sold a book as an NFT. Now this NFT normally is just a static NFT, but when they're multi-resourced, like on Rima, if you open this file with Audible, you'll get the MP3 audiobook version of it. If you open it with Kindle, you'll get the PDF plain text version. And maybe if you open it directly in your wallet, you might get a behind the scenes MP4 footage of the author actually creating this book and story. Another cool application that they're planning on is using your NFTs as tickets, because no longer do you have to destroy your NFT or no longer does the data have to be centralized to see if the ticket was used or not, but you can actually create a ticket and a ticket stub. So as you pass through the arena entry into VCon, your ticket turns into a ticket stub, meaning you can still keep the original NFT, but people know you've actually used it. Now, this also makes NFT collections compatible with things that haven't come out yet. That is, you could release an NFT collection now and say you release a sword once again and it's a 2D sword because your profile photos are in 2D. Think like the Bored Ape Yacht Clubs, they're just 2D profile photos at the moment. But then when the other side launches and it's a 3D metaverse and everyone's running around, you don't wanna be running around with your crappy 2D sword. You want that to be rendered in 3D. And the multi-resource NFT function would allow this to actually occur where you can have extra resources put inside your NFT to be contextual to the new environment. Now this is both the multi-resourced and the forward compatible section of our complex sentence that is getting easier and easier to understand. And that takes us to number three, on-chain emotes. Now this is actually a feature I think is quite underrated. It looks really simple on the surface. It's just a social mechanic where you can send emotes or emojis onto the blockchain through someone's NFT. So say someone owns this bird NFT, you can react to it with the thumbs up or the cool bro sign or even just a party hat. Now the cool thing about this is that these emotes are actually stored on the blockchain. And therefore anytime you transfer this NFT or anytime you transfer the media file, these emotes are always going to be transferred with it. Now this is a massive innovation because you can imagine right now you go over to OpenSea and maybe you like an NFT on the OpenSea platform. However, that like is exclusive and centralized to the OpenSea platform. Anytime that NFT is transferred, transferred or viewed anywhere else, nobody can see how many likes it got. But this technology allows it to be embedded into the NFT. So all likes across all platforms are accumulated and pulled in one and actually stored as somewhat of a value inside the NFT itself. Think of this as like a futuristic Instagram functionality where you might upload a photo or an image and people's reactions are actually recorded into that image instead of just being able to see them on Instagram. And now this gets really cool when you can consider waiting to the reacts. Meaning if I go and like one of your photos, cool, Benji liked one of your photos. But imagine if Kanye West, Steve Jobs came back from the dead and Oprah Winfrey all went and liked this photo. Well, this photo or piece of art would then be worth a lot more based on the interactions people have had with it. 
because it's on the blockchain and you can verify all of this. And now when you combine this with the next feature, it gets really, really cool. Because the next feature is called, number four, conditional rendering, which is the ability for an NFT to have different client side outputs. For example, if an NFT of a moon had 50 half moons and 50 rockets sent to it, the NFT could morph into a different output and be a half crescent moon with a rocket landing on it. Or another simple version of this is you could have an apple. And this apple is an NFT. Now after a certain amount of time, say six months, this apple might disintegrate and turn into a rotten apple because it hasn't been eaten or used. But if someone sent it the dinner time fork and spoon emoji, well then this apple will be consumed and will turn into an apple core, which you could render as golden and keep as a bit of memorabilia. And this feature actually introduces deterioration or dilapidation onto collectible NFTs. Now this is a way to actually have recurring income in the NFT ecosystem. Think about once again, if you had a sword as an in-game item. Now that sword started to rust for every day that it wasn't used or cleaned, but you could buy cleaning material, maybe an apple juice to clean this sword and make sure it didn't rust. And this cleaning material actually cost you money and could be another revenue driver for one of these gaming ecosystems. And it allows you to do the opposite thing. Imagine this same sword, just plain Jane basic sword that you get in a game and it's not very powerful. But once you kill a hundred enemies, this sword levels up to a diamond sword. Or once you defeat the ice princess on her ice castle, it now becomes an ice diamond sword, which is even more powerful. So you can see the applications here really are endless and that Remark has made this a very powerful technology that allows NFTs to actually be dynamic. And this also fills in the conditional section of our confusing NFT sentence, which leaves one thing, eternally liquid. Well, this brings us to the fifth feature that Remark is introducing to the NFT world. The ability for NFTs to be fractionalized and community governed, it's NFT DAOs, which basically you could take any Remark NFT and fractionalize it into Remark tokens. You can distribute these tokens to people in your community and they can be used in a decentralized way to collectively make votes and issue commands on what should be happening with that NFT. A possible use case that Remark uses is an NFT billboard embedded into a piece of NFT land in the metaverse. This billboard can then be fractionalized into actual tokens. You can distribute these tokens to people who live around the area and big brands can submit their ideas on what they want to put on the billboard in order to promote their products. But ultimately, the people who live in that area can vote on which ads they like the most using their tokens and therefore which ad gets displayed and when. And by fractionalizing NFTs, you can also take really expensive million dollar NFTs and allow them to be owned by many people who don't have a million dollars to buy it. That's the final piece of the confusing sentence, eternally liquid, forward compatible, nested, conditional, multi-resourced NFT. Now, before I get onto the Remark token, if you didn't know, we actually have a Patreon because most people don't have hours and hours to dig through all the best crypto tokens and watch all the biggest influencers to see what they're buying to find the best ones. We make this really easy because we track influencer wallets like Alex Becker's or Gary V's so you can see what they're buying immediately when they buy it and not wait for them to post it on their social media and everyone to pump the coin. We also have really simple crypto gaming research reports and educational resources to help you level up your Web3 game without spending countless hours going in circles by yourself. If that sounds like a community you might be interested in, I'll leave the link in the description below for you. Okay, so we've covered basically how Remark are making NFTs dynamic, but there's important information about their token and their ecosystem that we haven't touched on yet. And this basically started because the Remark team know that their technology is a little too sophisticated and really poorly understood by the mainstream community. So they actually decided to make their own NFT project showcasing everything that you could do with this new technology. It's called Canaria. And these are NFT birds that actually started as eggs. People were actually able to interact with these eggs using emojis, just like we talked about. And those on-chain emojis actually influenced what the bird looked like when it was hatched. Pretty cool. The canary birds are now listed for sale on their NFT marketplace called Singular. And the Remark team are actually launching their own version of the metaverse, which looks pretty cool. It's called Skybreach. It'll be governed by the native Remark token. It'll be a place to call home for the Canaria NFT bird collection, as well as a new NFT that hasn't dropped yet. And of course, it'll be governed by their native token Remark. 
So let's have a look at this token. Well, at the time I'm recording this video, and it's always funny to look back at old videos and be like, ah, oh, goddamn, I should have bought it then, or goddamn, I'm glad I didn't buy it then. But right now, the Remark token is valued at $3.75. This gives it a total market cap of about $35 million. Now the token allocation was done through a fair drop and was really well distributed to people who held Canaria birds. And the dilution is basically non-existent because 95% of the tokens are already out there in circulation. The peak market cap so far for this project was in December 2021 when the market cap was over $600 million. Now, what are my personal thoughts on picking up this coin? Well, I'm not sponsored by Remark and don't benefit in any way if you do or don't buy this token. I don't really care. But I will be picking up more Remark for my personal portfolio based on the research that I did for this video. Please make sure you're making the decision for yourself and you take into account when you're buying, what the current price and market cap of Remark is, and also your risk tolerance. Mine is stupidly high and I don't recommend it. And lastly, something else that I think Remark is doing really well that I don't see in a lot of other projects is they have a solid social media game. Their YouTube channel is there to educate people and there's not crazy amounts of interaction on it yet, but you can see the people who are interested in it are going there and getting educated. I think the big step that Remark is sort of missing is the bridge that goes from the high-tech technology and the in-depth explanations to something that can be laid out really simple and demonstrated so that people will understand it really quick. Remember, if you want more token updates like this, hit that subscribe button below. Consider joining our Patreon if you want in-depth research reports and a community who's going to support you in the crypto gaming world. The link to that, once again, is in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.